Property Graduate is the show for aspiring property developers and investors to win a life-changing opportunity that money can't buy. The prize is twofold, forming a property company with renowned property guru John Howard and owning 50% of the shares. John is one of the most experienced property developers and investors in the UK today. With almost four decades experience in the industry, he's been there and done that, having purchased and sold around 4,000 homes, apartments and developments. This savvy businessman is putting £1 million of his own money into the new company so the winner can buy and develop a property. With a 50% stake in it, they'll automatically receive a 50% share of the profit and potentially have John as a business partner for life. You're watching Property Graduate. In the previous episode, we saw how the 10 contestants who made it through the interview round were given a property appraisal by John to see if they have what it takes to be his next property partner. Their challenge is to create a plan which will result in a net profit of 30% after all costs and interest, and they have just one hour to do it. Once the hour is up, they're grilled by Helen and Fiona and asked this very important question. How much would they actually pay for the property? In the last episode, we saw how David, Eleanor, Aaron, Vanessa and James got on. In this episode, we'll find out how the five other contestants fared. First up, we have a young man who said, I live and breathe property and everyone who knows me knows how much I love it. Unfortunately, prior to filming this episode, Luigi had undergone surgery on his throat, which meant he couldn't speak but he didn't let this small inconvenience prevent him from being the next property graduate, so he decides to give it his best shot. He's been given a freehold purpose-built four-storey block of flats in Bedfordshire with a guide price of between 1.5 to 1.6 million pounds. So, you were given a very interesting uh, deal to analyse. How did you feel about this one? I am so sorry, I'm unable to talk as I just had a tonsillectomy surgery a few days ago. So I missed off two things on my deal sheet. I didn't write down marketing costs, which would be six thousand pounds. Okay. But the profit and costs will be correct. Six grand's not gonna be a deal breaker, so that's okay. And legal fees would be eight thousand pounds. For the sale. So I have got down forty thousand pounds to extend the lease. So yeah, using thumbs up and thumbs down, how or even thumbs sideways, how would you how did you feel given this deal? Yeah, it was interesting. Is this the sort of deal you would want to be looking at doing? Potentially, yeah. But I like the planning game one. Didn't have a lot of options? I didn't have that much information on the floor plans. So Thank you're you. more interested in doing planning game type deals? Potentially, yeah. Sure. I'm flexible about it. Oh, no, no, no. Yep, yeah. we, un we understand you can be, you can yeah. be flexible about these things. Well, we've got 10 garages as well. So what was your thinking on the garages? Yeah, give them give them some of the flats garages, yeah, 100%. or or potentially tidal split off and do something else with them, maybe build there or something. Um, where were the uh, so the garages are below the flats, aren't they? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, or is that, would another option be to convert them into residential, more residential space? Potentially, just because of the time frame, I just wanted to get the right numbers. And yeah. See. But you did manage to to work to get the the thirty percent return on costs that John was after, and the purchase price around nine hundred k. That's what you'd be comfortable up to. So, did you consider we we're already getting the five stories? Whether you could go even higher into permitted development? Yes, and I just wanted to keep it simple. But in the future, if we do proceed with it, then it would be. You would analyse that out if we did proceed with it. Yeah. Yeah. So you could look look at that option, but just keeping it simple, given you only had an hour to, to analyse it. John likes keeping it simple, so that, that's, <laughs> he does. you're certainly on the same page as him on that on that side of things. And the 180k that you've got for the construction costs, yeah. what's that based on? Only seven of the flats needed refurbishing. That's why I put down 180,000 pounds. It works out to be 20,000 pounds per flat for refurbishment costs. This is conservative figure for one bedroom studio flats. 
And what did you think of the different leases on there? There's some licenses and other things going on. Only 11 of the 16 flats are on ASTs. To extend the lease, I have put down 40,000 pounds. Only four of the flats need the lease extending, so worst case, 40,000 pounds for that. Well, thank you very much, Luigi. Thank no, you. you've done really well. Thank you very much. Oh, bless him. <laughs> that was quite challenging for him, wasn't it? It definitely was, but I actually think he worked through it quite impressively. Yeah, he did. He obviously kind of thought about some of the questions that we were going to ask and had those prepared, so mm. bless him. You know, he gave a good breakdown of how he got to his figures. He prepared, you know, a nice comparables list. Yeah. Uh, Hadn't gone into the really explored the kind of going up or adding more stories, yeah. which I think would be the game changer on this particular deal. And it wasn't an, a particularly straightforward deal for him to be no. to be analysing, and yeah. he seemed to analyse it well, yeah. yeah, given the time. Next up, we have Alicia, who spent her life in commercial finance-related roles. Alicia has been given a freehold office investment opportunity in Hampshire with a guide price of £900,000. How are you doing? How did you find that? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well is this, done. Is this the sort of deal you'd look at yourself? It's nothing I've ever done before. Right. Um, massively out of my depth on that, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, spent about 55 minutes researching it, everything. And then had five minutes my numbers and just went, yeah, I'm just might as well just leave that because there's no point in me making it up on the spot. Mm. Cool. Talk us through kind of what you did, what you looked at. So just kind of put the numbers to one side for the minute. I did a lot more on the background because it's in a conservation area grade two. I went through on the planning portal. So I went through, I've actually got stuff on my phone. I took some screenshots of a previous planning application that had been put through for so a care good. home. Yeah found it had been previously sold 2014, I think it was. Um, How much did it sell for then? Uh, it was 700K that it sold for. They put the planning application in in 2016, which was refused in 2017, which was for the care home. Now from reading the notes, I mean, it was a huge proposal and I read through the whole thing. The officer's notes were to say, the conservation officers to say, the only reason why they rejected it was because they were gonna demolish the Victorian facade. Now, if they'd have kept that, the proposal would have been quite favourable, mm. which is why I got to a point where I thought, actually, there is a potential for this. Mm -hmm. Before I get to the number side, I was thinking in terms of risk and timescales. Yeah. Now you're going to need a contractor who is pretty local to the area, has experience in conversions of, of in, in a conservation area, someone who is going to be high end. Um, you're going to be looking at quality. So the conservation office is going to be looking at quality. But I think for me, the time scales on something like this, just at the initial time scale to get something, a scheme of this size and, 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 and obviously how complicated it is up and running, you're looking at months to be able to get, you mm. know, on board with parish councils, conservation officer, planning officer. First of all, it's actually getting to a point where you can have a conversation with these people and then having a dialogue with them that's meaningful. Uh, that's going to take months, if mm. not. And, and you're looking at projects months. of this value and size. You you want to be in and out on projects like this. This is you're looking at four years, aren't you? Once you've got construction up and running, you've got all that. Even if it went 100% okay, which we know it never does, mm. four or five years on a, on a on a build like this. And by which time, where's the market going to be? Nobody's going to know where no. we are. I kind of got to the end where I was kind of going through everything. I thought, Do you know what? If you have deep pockets, and you're up for a big challenge. Do you know what? You probably give it a go. It's it's not something that I looked at and thought I could even make an offer on. That's why I kind of left purchase price empty because I thought I don't really know what I would want to offer on something mm. like this because I don't fully understand the costs. But what I did think, looking at it as it is in terms of a commercial and where it is, if you're an armchair investor and you want to make nine percent. I mean, some of those leases, you're looking at possible revisions all very, very soon really weak covenants on the leases you know if you mm. could jazz them up a little bit um, and the vacant the vacant uh, suite put someone in there if you could do that and on terms of a paper exercise increase the strength of the covenants you could possibly flip this on but at what value would also depend on who you were going to kind of put in there and what covenants you could secure yeah so that's kind of where i got to with it is it's possibly a quick flip if we can do something with the covenants 
if you're just an armchair investor, you can sit down on it and enjoy it 9%, you know, as it is. Beautiful area, beautiful building. You know, to have that in your mm. portfolio, great. But from a business angle, it scared me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, like we said, yeah. you had an hour and, and, and that was the point to see what you can do in an hour. So Absolutely. well done. Your level oh, of attention you. to detail and research has really, really been quite impressive. Great work. <laughs> great. great All work. right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Super. Thank you. So I have to admit, when there wasn't many numbers filled out on that spreadsheet, you feared the, <laughs> you feared the worst. <laughs> yeah. But actually, I was talking us through what she looked at. I mean, the amount of research she got done in an hour was really pretty impressive. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, the additional sheets, you should, like, I liked how she laid it all sort of, sort of out. Uh, she did a good approach and she recognised it wasn't working quite, quite clearly, which was another, uh, another good thing. And actually, the, all the things about the TPOs, the car parking, the 15 gr uh, grand deductible rent-free sum. I mean, there was... Yeah, going through the, the planning history. Yeah. Smart, smart cooking. Join us again after the break when we see how our youngest contestant, Alfred, gets on. Next to appear before Helen and Fiona is Alfie, who, at 22 years old, is our youngest contestant. He was given a freehold, double-fronted, semi-detached building in Guildford, Surrey, that was put up for auction with a guide price of £750,000. Hello. Hello. Hi, welcome back, Alfred. So, we loved your enthusiasm from the first round. How enthusiastic do you feel about this deal? This, this deal is not really my strong point, really. Okay. It's a, well, it's a, it's a refurb project, really. I'm more interested in commercial conversions. This okay. is This kind of needs new kitchen, new bathroom, and kind of a, a general redecoration. And it's not, not really where I'd say my strong point is. Mm -hmm. And it's generally not where you're going to make a 30% a return on cost. So, not quite what I would, would have liked for, but it's work with what you get really. Okay, well, but you, you know, you filled out a lot of the detail here, you know, we have good detail. Do you want to kind of run th us through that? Yeah, sure. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a large Victorian property. Um, it's currently got four flats in it, of which three are vacant and one is tenanted. A very low rent of around 5,000 a year. Uh, market rent would be about 1,000 a month. So I think that's pretty reflective of the condition of it. Uh, it's in a really good location in Guildford. Uh, where the, the um, price per square meter is about four thousand four hundred. Mm -hmm. um, so there is the the the, uh, the strategy here here is really to to refurb them and then sell them on from there. Um, it's not listed, um, and it's it's adjoined to a couple of garages which have been sold off previously. Mm -hmm. So I think someone has bought the deal, sold those garages off, and put this back in the auction. Right. Right. And that's that's where the meat is really by developing on that land. So the, the GDV I've kind of calculated per square meter based on the size of each flat. And generally looking about the average is about 44 square meters. So they range from uh, 221 for 50 square meters down to 167 for the smaller one. Uh, probably be uh, tenanted by um, first time buyers. It's they're quite nice sort of starter flats for people to get into the market. Um, and the market is really strong in that area. There's really not a lot of stock available to, to rent or to buy. And um, so I think they would they would sell pretty quickly. And I've anticipated six months to sell them. And how, how much for the whole deal? Uh, it's around 12 months time okay. scale for that, which I think is, is reasonable for a, a refurb. It's just a refurb and, yeah. and the sale. I like that you priced in 12, uh, sorry, six months for the sale. And in terms of who you're selling it to, so first time buyers, that, yeah. that's what you... Think the probably market. yeah it might it's probably not going to yield enough for an investor so i think first time buyers sure. will be the market 95% yeah yeah and i did i did have a few a few alternative options as well so sure talk us through those so the the ideal one is modernizing the flats and then sell them on mm -hmm. but if that wasn't the market dipped i think we could rent them for around a uh, thousand a month and that gives uh just under 60k a year rent mm -hmm. so i think the yield on that on the gdv would be about seven eight percent so it's reasonable um, if, if you get it at the, the asking price. Yeah. But the other option is redeveloping it as a single family home, but that's probably not going to get planning based on the lack of garden space. And it's not going to, it's not going to sell for the price that we'd really want. A nice, a nice home like that in the area with a garden would be about 1.2 million, but you're not going to get that without a garden there and no parking either. Did you find this diff a difficult task? Not particularly. 
<laughs> it's it's simpler than than I could have could have done, but all the same, it's 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 a reasonable challenge. And in terms of what you would like to do, the type of deals you would like to do, so you talk about commercial conversion. Mm -hmm. Have you got an example of something that? What would your ideal uh, deal be? Probably sort be? of office to residential sort of scheme. So I've got one uh, that I'm reviewing at the moment. Potentially will offer on. Uh, which would be seven flats in an office building, mm. uh, full full PD, and th that's where I, li I like to do PD really than sort of planning. And new, I don't want to do new builds either. Great, that's super. Thank you, Alfred. All right, great. Thanks very understand. much. Did you yeah. want to go through the numbers at all or not? That all makes no perfect sense. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that didn't phase Alfred whatsoever, <laughs> did it? No. I liked the way he laid it out. He had three different options. Yeah. He didn't necessarily love those options, but he considered each of those options. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and worked out, you know, what he needed to pay to get the 30% return. Exactly. Unfortunately for the seller, wouldn't have been what they would have wanted. It's not. By a long shot. Based on what, what we were chatting about, it, it's about where we were as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it seemed to have good research. Moment. Yeah and uh, knows the type of deals that work for him. Yeah. Uh, recognised that. So that was really comfortable to, to see and to hear. Strong contender. Definitely. Next, we have chartered accountant Kimberly, who is given a long leasehold part vacant office in Cardiff city centre with a guide price of £750,000. So what did you think of the, your deal? I liked it. Yeah, yeah I, I'm uh, from a commercial background in the landlord tenant space, so um, a cash flow pro property already um, I liked. I, you know, it was a um, nice big property, you could do quite a bit with it, so I was quite excited. I wish I could have a few more days to look at all the options there because it's in mm. a great location as well, so there's lots great of options. Location. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. this is the sort of deal you'd look, you'd like to consider doing? Definitely. Yeah, I'd be intrigued to know if John bought this one. <laughs> <laughs> he may have. We don't yeah. know. Yeah, no, we don't I, know. I, I've resisted temptation to look online mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. I didn't want to know what the uh, the purchase price, what it went for, or if it did go. So yeah, um, I'll look and it wasn't too. For, re, it was reasonably recent as well. Yeah. Yes, March. Yeah, so I'm sure I'll look at it afterwards. So, <laughs> so do you want to talk us through your approach when you were looking at, through this, and then the, you know what options you looked at. Yep. what you thought you might you know want to pay for it yeah yeah so so um first of all it's in wales so there's no pd so it's a planning route to com convert to the cost so obviously it's five floors three of them tenanted at the moment but some of them we couldn't get back for a few years mm -hmm. um although there's a rent review on one of them there's a tenant break but not a landlord break um so there may be some negotiation there to maybe get them um, exited earlier but um, so two three floors cash flowing which would be good that should help out um, although we don't know if they're actually paying in the COVID times whether they want to stay so I actually haven't factored in the rental income which I, I did acknowledge afterwards I was going to write as a comment that that might be a bit of upside that we get yeah um, but if we can obviously get them out and do it all now that would actually be a better mm. scenario mm. there was a previous planning um, permission on that that's lapsed I didn't have time to check um, you know, if that was a long time ago, where the space standards and things have changed, or, or you know, the local plans and that kind of thing. So, yeah, the plan was to create um, the flats on the vacant floors, um, convert them now while the other assets cash flowing, and then in the future hold them, and then in the future um, build out the rest because the the GDVs on the commercials were still quite low. Um, around the three to four hundred mark, and I think we'd get them up to more like seven hundred uh, if you convert to residential. So, how many flats did you think you could maybe get in there based um, on the? So, on each floor five, and there's two vacant, so start with ten, mm -hmm. but in all the way up to maybe twenty four, twenty five um, for each floor, because there's five floors that are all symmetrical. So that would be the end game. So I thought there's a, a pitch now to build out the two floors, and then in future build out the other three floors, probably around the same time because there are within a 18 month period, you can get the properties back. So you look like one set of build now and then build later all at the same time, get your economies of scale on the build. Mm. Um, so my numbers today were only based on the first phase, but I think I've kind okay. of showed you kind of what the end GDV could be yeah. Yeah. in future, but I haven't worked out the cost of that, but clearly it'd be quite a symmetry of where we're at today. So I've worked out the GDV based on a, um, what an average one bed flat and two bed flat um, are going for at the moment. Okay, so instead of using square foot per square foot, you've done unit price. Um, I did both. Okay. Um, so uh -huh. I did um, 
I, I worked out both the average of a one bed and a two bed and also the square foot basis and then kind of did a little bit in the middle. I would normally take off for being above a shop. Yeah. But because it was five floors in a really good location and my metrics were all based on no parking anyway and um, you know the standard that it was already kind of built into my numbers. Okay. Um, obviously with a bit more analysis I could do a bit more comparable assessments. There, there in are a bit six more parking detail. spaces though. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how you would divvy that or whether they're assigned to any of this. Yeah, that's commercial. what I, I didn't know. So I assume, I assume worst case and, Actually, and that would be next stage for me. I think they're being rented out because it's 2,000 per annum for six per, spaces. Per annum, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's the option to allocate either of those to the flats or we'll carry on or, renting them out. So. Yeah, but I, I think it was two grand a year. It's negligible on the, the bigger numbers. Yeah, the size. Pocket price. change compared to some of the other mm -hmm. <laughs> numbers. <laughs> so work out at the GDV. I think I did factor in one of them has got a rent review July 22, so this time next year, and it's massively under rented. So it's about 20 grand a year when. If you look at the other rents, they're way up in the 27, Higher, 29. Yeah. So that will probably be a negotiation tactic to say, look, you can't afford the new rent. It's time, for, you know, maybe time for you to move on. Or this is what you know, this is what it's going to be. Increase your GDV through especially, asset management. Especially if you're doing uh, 10 flats, you know, is it below them, above them, below them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, they might exactly. get noisy and messy. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. They might. Want want to move on their on their own accord. Mm, um, yeah. I didn't have time to look at the tenant covenant strength and um, you know what, what that whether actually we might want to keep them or can we improve that. You know we could look at doing a serviced office on a floor, which might be a great location. Um, I hadn't had time to kind of look at that as a comparison, but I know in that kind of location it'd be worth it'd be worth doing. There's an, with serviced accommodation, sorry, serviced offices. What I found is the smaller sites it's just not worth it. But because this five floors it might be definitely something that's that's worth doing so just something as a comparison right so mm. i've deviated there so that's the the GD, gdv yeah um i then um worked out the bill cost so then i've looked at well what's the net convertible area i'm assuming that the three floors are okay that are tenanted at the moment they're happy as they are so the two floors um what i'm converting and then look at a, a, the a first cut stage for the time that I've got like a pound per square foot, a pound per square meter. Yeah. Um, I've, typically, I'd use around a thousand pounds per square foot as a you know first marker and stand, and then obviously go up and down depending on how complex the job is and mm -hmm. you know what the standard is, what the roof look like, and that kind of thing. I have downgraded this slightly for this one because it is in office stands and it, and from the from the way that it looks, it looks quite open plan. The windows look okay, so I've actually downgraded it. And also because there's 10 flats, you should get some economies of scale. What would you want to get the building for uh, to make your plans work? Well, um, the purchase price that I put down is um, 1,170. Uh, Which is a bit higher than the guide. So yeah. you'd make the seller mm -hmm. happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, typically they do go, go higher, don't they? So um, yeah, and, and knowing that I've not factored in the rent, you know, I, I, at the moment, for, for the hour that I've looked at, if all my figures are correct, that, that's as high as um, I'd be willing to go. Well, super. I mean, it's a really thorough analysis, particularly given the time challenge that mm. you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, super and really yes. appreciate your thoughts. Great to get insight into how you'd approach it. Thank you. Thank right. you. There was so much detail on that analysis that I was struggling to get through, <laughs> through that and keep up with her myself. That was... That was, that was impressive. Exactly. Great approach. You recognise that it has a leasehold and that there might you know, be a site assembly option in terms of um, you know, buying the freeholds. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell her, her background and experience in commercial is, it brings so much value to the table. Yeah. I think she's, I think she's a really strong candidate. Coming up after the break, we'll see how Tej gets on. Next up, we have Tej, who's been given a former Coast Guard building in Walton-on-the-Nays in Essex. It's to be auctioned with a guide price of £325,000. Hello. Welcome. So how did you get on? Do you want to talk us through the deal, what you thought of it, what you think you can do with it? Sure. Let us know your numbers. So it's definitely a challenge. You know, uh -huh. It wasn't straightforward at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an old uh, Coast Guard building, sort of an old office. Some of it is resi, some of it's just empty space. I think 
this part of, I think it's in Walton on the Nays, it's by the coast. It is a nice area um, and I think the first thing I thought was, right, can we make this into houses? Can we extend it? Because it's got quite a bit of land as well as the actual footprint. Mm -hmm. Then I did some digging and looked at some planning applications and that's not really feasible. So the next best thing I thought, looking at the structure of that and given it has so much parking, would be to use the existing structure uh, and convert it into flats, nine flats, plus one bungalow. Now at the back of it, when you look at the OS map, it's got a little sort of, it looks like a muse house, like an annex. I would put that into one two or three bedroom bungalow plus the nine flats. Right. And what's your nine flats based on? The planning application that was sent in for nine flats. And you'd just go with that? You wouldn't go for enhanced planning or anything? I think looking at the plans they drew and also the mention of the pre app they put in, which was larger, it's probably best to stick to this given what they what they implied was said before. And sorry, that was approved, that planning? Um, that planning is a waiting decision. The pre app was positive as you know, it always is. So. And what are your thoughts on maybe uh, just all flats? That could be done as well. Uh, I just thought given we have a kind of single story bungalow looking place by the seaside, I think the target market, I think a bungalow would get a higher resale value than building another flat there, for example. Okay, so yeah, so that's interesting because uh, based on the square footage, you could get 11 or 12 flats which would actually come back at a higher GDV than your bungalow and nine flat option. So how would you then decide between that, those two projects? What would you look, to look at? I think as well as the GDV, if it's significantly higher, that's kind of the decision, I suppose, half made for you. Um, I would also look to speak to local agents, maybe local developers uh, in my network and say, look, you know, what is more desirable here? If there's this many flats, are we going to flood the market? I noticed there were not that many flats on the market, but ones that were were sticking, they'd been on for quite a while, especially in this, this crazy market. So it would be a consideration of, yes, the GDV is more, but are we going to sell them quickly? And are we going to sell them at the right kind of price? I mean, there's uh, only nine though. Nine's hardly going to flood the market, right? Well, given that how many were on the market at the moment, which was three, and they were all in the same building plus one, I suppose it's balancing the demand in a seaside town of yeah, flats, bungalows, houses, what are people really looking for? I did also think on a rental perspective, if you did keep it, mm -hmm. one could be a serviced accommodation or a few of them. Mm. Yeah, definitely an element for that. Yeah, and did, did net profit come into to your thoughts in terms of reviewing the, uh, you know, nine flats bungalow versus say 11 or 12 flats? I, no, to be honest, I didn't even, with the flats, it would have probably, mm, I'm not sure, I didn't get time to be honest, to, to do that comparison. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And what GDV did you come up with for on your numbers? I came up with two million. And that's, okay. I would say, conservative. And based on, talk us through that. Sure. So I use sold data. I did look at selling data just to get a kind of, you know, current view, I suppose. But sold data of one bed flats, two bed flats, and three bed flats, and bungalows. Most of them were rough. So I added a bit of a percentage on to say this is a new build, but probably not as much as I could have because I want to be conservative and, you know, Arguably, right now, the market is a strange place. Where, sorry, where did you go to for that source data? Uh, right move sold data, which is straight from Landridge. Okay. So what did your return on costs, what did you get to on that? Well, I wrote note here um, because it didn't get to 30% yeah. on the price that I put in. Um, essentially, I put in a purchase price of £300,000. So I worked backwards uh -huh. um, and I believe the net profit was £248,000, which would make it not 30%, if my maths is correct. No, that's 8%, isn't it? 8 or 9%. Yeah, so really, you know, for this to work, it would have to be a fair bit lower than guide price, looking at my GDV, my calculations. But it's interesting that we noted that you had done some research in terms of working out actually what it did sell for. And as you'll see, it sold for. Yes, £646,000, I believe. So, I mean, it, it went for kind of not quite, but almost kind of double the asking price. So someone's got an angle on it somewhere. What have you missed? Um, I think one thing. So if they're a builder, then their per square meterage cost is going to be significantly less. Sure. 
Uh, I think also the market at the moment when we're filming this is crazy. You now people are overpaying for stuff. I'm mm. not saying they have. Yeah. But I think there's an element that they could have overpaid. It's auction. It's all sort of, you know. But it was happened. last September. It was still crazy then. Yeah. I think the lockdown hype was still happening. Maybe not as heavy as it is now. Um, but I think the main thing is they're potentially a builder. Uh, maybe they're going to hold it. So they're not looking, you know, if, if I speak to a sort of non-professional developer, they're not looking at 30%. Some are happy with 10 or 15. So it, yeah, could be someone's happier with less. But John's not, so that's not especially relevant. Yes. And, and those, the people that bought that might have been the ones that put that pre-app in that you said it's not yep. decided yet, so. Yeah, I think they were, same owners. If you had chance to change something in what you've given us so far, what would it be? I, if the GDB is higher for flats, I would forget the bungalow and put it in for flats. Okay. Obviously there's PD rights for building upwards now, so there's also a, you know another layer of complexity that could increase the GDB there. But you'd have a substantial increase in costs as well, right? Yeah. How long do you think that would take to do that project? So just the construction element. I've put in a year and a half in total. Um, I think it would take less. And that's, again, being super conservative. Uh, I think it could take a lot less because it's not a new build. We're not coming out the ground. There's the risk element, that risk element isn't there. So I think it'd be less. But so your 18 months is including sale time? Yes. And what do you think kind of the, the market for flats would be? You know, do, do you think that's the right product for the right market? Honestly, I don't think it's ideal. Right. I think it's one of the best uses for this building. Yeah. But given it's kind of a cute little seaside town, how many millennials get in the train to London? You know, so it's not ideal, but I think there could be, I know, you know, there is two stories here, but there could be some downsizers, um, people who just don't want a, you know, they want something smaller with a sea view, perhaps. Mm -hmm. What about the entire doing the whole block as service accommodation? Yeah, yeah that's an option. If, if we were going to hold it and not sell it for the 30%, I think there's definitely options there. Or, or, or set it up for that and sell it to a service accommodation operator. Yeah, yeah. As one block, yeah. Especially with the garden space and the view and the fact that it's on the end and then it's just beach and like a walking path. I think it's really nice for things like that. Sorry, one last question. Oh, yeah. Would this be the type of deal that you would bring to John? No. Nope. If, if if I it it doesn't interest me, and I suppose I'm sick of polishing turds. I want to do a new build. I want everything to be straight, everything to be perfect, everything to be clean and tidy and created as I want it. So, I'm not overly keen on this or on flats. I like houses. I like not higher end houses, but not lower end. And have you done new build before? Nope. Okay. New build, new problems. Yeah, big money, big problems, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, great. Happy super. Thanks. Amazing. Thank Thanks, Thanks a, lot. a lot. So a little bit of confusion on the numbers there. The return on costs, nope. I was looking for a little more than that, if I'm entirely honest. I think I really like Tej and I think he's a great, a great character. Yeah. I just get a concern that the casual demeanour the nope in the document. It's just a certain, prof I guess, professionalism I'd like to see. But ha and that's possibly his character, um, the casual, casual way. I just think um, that I'd like to just see a little bit more. Yeah, and and you know, my calculation was you could have paid up to four hundred and sixty thousand or so to get the tw the thirty percent return. You know, eleven or twelve flats. Um, it did feel like was having to try and pull some of that out of him. All 10 contestants have completed their appraisals and faced Helen and Fiona. We saw how some took it in their stride, while others found it a bit more tricky. Now the panel need to choose the best three to put through to the final round called The Deal. Find out who makes the cut after the break. Having analysed the property appraisals of each consultant, and grilled them on their numbers, Helen and Fiona now have to discuss with John who they think should go through to the final. So we've Good got chosen. two definites yeah, that two we want definites. to put through. Yeah. Have you? And yeah. then we have... Am I going to like them? Well, what we thought was we thought we want to find out who your two 
definite might be to see if they're the same. Well, okay. Who um, impressed in the first yeah. round? For I example? think in the first round, the two that impressed from impressed me were. <laughs> those two. So our two definites are those two. <laughs> same page. <laughs> Turns out I didn't need you two at all. <laughs> Do you know what? But they they, they delivered. They pr stood up as much today as they did in the first round. So. Okay. And how did they get all the numbers? Great. Yeah. Uh, Alfred almost thought that the deal was too a little too easy for him. Yeah. So he? He, was he was good. Yeah. Absolutely unflustered by it. He it wasn't his kind of deal. He'd do something else, but he he wasn't phased by it whatsoever. Okay, so he was good. great. So Kimberly yeah. just broke the deal. She you know she was given quite a complicated deal. Which one deal. was she given? Well, reminded me. The Cardiff deal. Oh yeah, the Cardiff deal. That yeah. was the. I like that deal. I, mean, yeah. I, yeah. I was I was an underbidder on that. You know, I wanted to buy that. Yeah. I genuinely wanted to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So she saw all the angles. She saw the yeah. potential to get the freehold and the site yeah. assembly. Good. She saw that two vacant floors could be converted now, potentially. Uh, and there was she, phasing it, which I like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love yeah. phasing. Yeah. yeah. She had she had all the numbers. There was so much detail on her sheet. It was kind of difficult for us to process in the time. So right. she answered every question. You could tell that she comes at it with the commercial background. She yes. was very, she, she answered everything, didn't she? Yeah, she just impressed. Yeah. What about Dave? Because Dave's a bit of a character, isn't he? So Dave did so well in the first round and really yeah. impressed us. Yep. Yeah. He was a little disappointing in this round. Uh, it seemed a little bit beyond him, the numbers, the analysis. He, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he was not what I call, a, and no disrespect to Dave, an old fashioned contractor, stroke builder, stroke, you know, um, someone who's going to oversee the site. And he hands knew, on, yeah. And he, he knows the job inside out. But, you know, figures may not be his bag. To and be he, fair to he him. knew that himself, you know, he knows kind of the experience that he yeah. brings to the table. And then he knew that he kind of struggled a little bit, yeah. particularly with the time frame okay. today. I think but a great personality would great be such personality. fun to work with. Yeah, he'd be great today. fun. I'd love to work with him. And I thought an hour, yeah. to be fair, do you think I was unreasonable with an hour? They struggled. I think, they all, I think literally, really? with the exception of Alfred, I think they all struggled with it. He's the only person, it seemed, that you it didn't really You could argue his was a little phase. bit, his was a bit different. Perhaps a, I think you're it right. was a bit easier than yeah, some of the others. Yeah. I'm not except, I, I, I would agree with that. But yeah. it was still tricky because actually it's not, it was not, it's not worth anything like the guide price. Yes. And yeah. as long as he got he, that. He did, he yeah, absolutely. Because actually, yeah, absolutely as we always say, out. some of the best deals are deals you don't do. Exactly. No, he so, worked that out. Um, so that was important. He, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and how we are with the others? I mean, um, for instance... So what about Alicia? I think Alicia was a little out of her depth with that deal. It's not one that she would do. But what I liked is, I mean, she'd done a lot of research. She went into a lot of detail yeah. and what she'd Too found out detail. online. There can never be enough detail for not me, your eyes. John. Not in your eyes, Helen, no. But in mine, there can be. Because you need to yeah. get on to the next deal sometimes. If it doesn't work, there's no point... There's no point flogging a, do a, you know, a dead horse, as they say. You just want to get rid of it and get onto one that will work for you. But what she'd done is look online and she's like, actually, yeah. this doesn't really work. No. But I found another one that did. Okay. I kind of liked that. But yes. there was other stronger candidates okay. today. Yeah. OK, OK. She didn't make our final three. No, our final OK. Three. Um, I'm st OK, and what about... So, Eleanor, she, uh, she had a London deal. Yes. Um, which was a retail St John's with, Wood. That's with right. Lovely location. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she th really didn't come. Didn't think any of the options would work except as existing. Right. Uh, she didn't think the single family home option would work because it was between two retail units. Mm, yeah, she's got a little bit of a point there. Yeah. Uh, so. But but that would just reflect on the price rather than yes. it being a no go. Exactly. It just might mean that it needs to be a bit cheaper, in my view, rather yeah. than a no go. But I would have yeah. liked to have seen her look at the as existing numbers and options, and then an alternative yeah. option laid out well yeah. on the do on the appraisal, and okay. that wasn't. That right. wasn't the case. Okay. She's still in the running, though, because her num this deal wasn't for her, Ooh. but she's... she's we'll leave her so, there, then. Yeah. You're fighting Eleanor's corner, oh, then. Yeah. Let's keep her down. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's just see. One banker to another, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not being... Hey, let's not say any more than that. What about Tej? What about Tej? How do, how do, how do we think he dealt with things? Tej is always smiling. Uh, I love the yellow. He's a character. Yes. He's definitely a character. 
He, oh God. He wouldn't come to any meetings with me with that on, I'll tell you now, with that, <laughs> with that, with that T-shirt on. We're talking a million pound deal here. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Not a and two I, bed semi round the corner. No, okay. So, so. so He's okay. not on our list. He's not he's on not, our Isn't he? List. Right, okay. No, no. Uh, what about James? What about James? So James approached, he, he's got his speciality. Yes. I'm not sure it's mine though. We're not sure it's yours either, but I still like him. I like the way he approaches it. And he, he did a really, he did a good job today. Professional job. Yes. Okay. He looked at the deal and he wanted to turn it into, well, he thought the only way to make it work was self-build plots. Okay. So put an infrastructure in and yep. then sell self plots. Self build plot. plots on that would never work in a million years in no. my view. Because what happens with self build plots, someone builds one, next door they, they, they put a caravan on it and don't build it for two years because they're fallen out or they haven't got the money. Next one they build it. It, it, it self builds fine if they're big houses. Yeah. Uh, big houses uh, and, and you can really legally tie them down to doing it within 12 months or 18 months. Okay. I so think he's still a contender. Yeah. 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 Okay. What about. Luigi. Luigi, I mean, bless him. You know, he's Voice had, issue, isn't yeah, he? he's since, had since like, yeah, it's just, it's surgery, yeah. so it was a little challenging yes. for him today in terms of the communication. But in terms of the way he looked at the deal, yes. mm. you know, well, he was a surprising outlier. He'd re pre-recorded sentences to, that he played for us, ah, uh, that's breaking clever. down. Yeah, he had a pretty good breakdown of the deal. Yeah, he didn't analyse the uh, additional two stories. He wanted yeah, to just that was a, deal with. Didn't he? I thought I thought I gave him the opportunity there to, to actually expand a little bit and say, look, there is a possibility of two more floors, PD, this, that, and the other, new rules. Yeah. But he didn't he didn't grab it. He didn't know, and that was That's that was a slight disappointment for me. So are we gonna leave him here? We're we gonna move him back up. I think he still works. Well, is he? Right, we'll leave him there then. Okay. And that only leaves two more. It does. So let's uh let's start with oops. Let's start with Vanessa. Vanessa. I mean, considering that commercial Terezi is her bag, she disappointed me a little today. I think perhaps she's a little like me in that she gets too involved in the detail and that might have overwhelmed Missed her. Missed the car parking, though. Missed the car parking. Completely. Was, yes. Which we put in there. You know, that deal is, is part, not all about it, it's, but partly about the car parking, isn't it? Yeah. Because of the size of the car park. Yeah. Uh, she missed that and that, that, that disappoints me. I didn't think she would. No, and the commercial valuation wasn't based, wasn't yield based either. So that, that was quite way up. 18,000 pound income, she valued it at 70,000. It's just okay. a little bit not, too. Not for today I mean, she, you know, she's a bright yeah. girl. Very bright lady. Very bright girl. Very but bright. So you get bright. overwhelmed with the detail. No, okay. Some of these people you're thinking next yeah. year or six, yeah. even 12 yeah. months yeah. time, yeah. I, I want to see what they're doing. Yeah. But maybe not, but maybe not, not, not today. So that yeah. leaves. Aaron. What do we think, Aaron? Uh, Aaron? He did a good uh, yeah, breakdown. He, he was articulate. Very His nice man. written work yeah. ne didn't necessarily reflect on the explanation that he gave to okay. us. Okay. No. He said he would bring a build around to evaluate the scheme. Mm, uh, yeah. So a little bit wishy-washy that, isn't it? I don't like that. A little bit slow. Uh, he also evaluated it based on reopening the care home as it was a vacant closed care home. That's oh, a yeah. lot of effort. As if, I, e, as if I want to be running the care home. I've got a vacant one already. I don't need another yeah. one. We might be putting you in the care home. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Fiona. That's kind. Just because I'm slightly older than you two. Oh, not much. Um, but he said, again, he was one that the, the deal, this deal wasn't specifically for him, but well, he talked kind tough, of about, about, about kind of <laughs> what type of thing he would well, do. Well, that's very so. nice of him, but the tough. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the... That, that's the that's the card he was given, yeah. and actually yes. he should have made it. You know, come on, he should have. Uh, I know, but what he we should have grabbed it with both hands. Part of this today is we wanted to see. We wanted them to say, to, where is the point at which they would say, actually, no, this is not for me, or no, this deal doesn't mm. work, and so all what, of these did. Reopening a care home is a is a is a serious. What? As a serious option, yeah. So he probably wasted time on that. Okay. So what are we left with? So these are who we have. We have okay. to so pick one from these yeah. three. So They're you're definite. very keen on those. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got the third place is between these three. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Look, we're letting you choose one of your well, own finalists. Well, that, that's so kind of you. I actually get to choose one. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Unfortunately, it's the end of the road for David, Tej, Vanessa, Alicia and Aaron. However, Alfred and Kimberly have secured their place in the final. 
but who will be the last to join them? Will it be James with his eco-house-building technique, Luigi, who has so far cut his teeth mostly in the HMO world, or could it be Eleanor, the lady who wants to inspire other women to get into property development? Before we find out, it's time to give Kimberly and Alfred the good news. Ah, Kimberly. Oh. How do you think it went today? Um, well, I've managed to get some figures on a paper, which is more than I was expecting. Well, um, Kimberly, I think that's ridiculous. You've had an hour. You had an hour <laughs> to do what I can do in 15 minutes. You're a qualified accountant, aren't you? Yeah. Kimberly had the most data on the paper, actually. Well, well that's something. What about the others then? You know, I mean, you all had an hour. I thought I was being generous with an hour. But to well, be fair, a Kimberly, hard task master, I don't John. think I am. I honestly don't think I am. But Kimberly, you did manage to to uh, work out the deal correctly. Uh, and it was a deal that I was the underbidder on. Oh. So I was keen to buy it myself. I would, like to buy it too. would you? Great. Well, unfortunately, that one's gone. But okay. you're one. going to have the opportunity potentially to buy a deal with me because you're through to the <laughs> last three. <laughs> so well Fantastic. done. Thank well you. done. Pleasure. Wow. Thank we'll you see you so in two much. weeks' time. Thank and by you. the way, you've got to bring a good deal. It may not be the deal if you win that we do, obviously, that's fine, but we need you to demonstrate that you can find a good deal and present it professionally. So it's different to today, okay? Yeah, I am going to. First okay. thing we do, phone the auction's house, see if that one's fallen through, because I want that one. <laughs> and thank you, ladies. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Thank well you. Done. Have a great trip job. Back. Right. Great thank job. You. Alfred, hi. hi. All the way through this, since the, the day I met you, you've been smiling, which is always nice. Um, I don't think you want to be negotiating smiling like that because people all think that you've, uh, you're having it away with them, as it were. However, how do you think today went? It was good. It's probably not my first choice of deal, but any deal not can your make first sense. choice of deal. That's no. nice. Right, OK. Well, let me tell you this. I was told by these two lovely ladies I have who have done a brilliant job today that you're a bit disappointed with the deal you were given, right? Is that true? It, it works, but it's at a price, so. I know, but do you think he, uh, we didn't stretch you enough or, or what? I, I could have done more, for sure. You could have done more. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes it's not the size of the deal. Some deals, the simplest of deals, are the best ones. I'd much prefer to do a simpler deal than I would some complicated deal. Yeah. So that's the first thing you need to learn. The second thing you need to do is make sure that you've got a cracking deal for the final because you're in the final. And, and please, you can do as much presentation on this on the final as you want. So, you know, go away, get it, get your head, get your head right, get a deal, make sure it's a good one. It may not be the deal if you win that we do, but you're in the final, get cracking. Thank you. Well done. See you in two weeks. Well done. Now, what about Luigi? Hi, Luigi. Um, Thank you for making the effort to come today because I know that, you know, there's, uh, you haven't got the voice at the moment. It'll be back soon, I know. Um, unfortunately, you haven't gone through to the final. However, we were very impressed. You were very, very close to being in the last three. I want you to keep in touch um, and, and let's see, see how you get on later on in the year and all the rest of it. But please keep in touch. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks, so who will be joining Alfred and Kimberly to make up the final three? Will it be Eleanor or James? Let's find out. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good, good. I understand you didn't like the deal I gave you. <laughs> I just felt that it wasn't uh, a deal that I could, I guess, wow you with kind of what I know. Well, I don't really care about that because it's a deal that I was very interested in buying. And uh, at the end of the day, Sometimes the simplest deals are the best deals to do. You don't always have to find something terribly complicated to make money. So um, on that basis alone, I was disappointed with, your, with, with what I heard. Hi, James. James. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Uh, how do you think it went today? Uh, I think it went pretty well. Um, I've just uh, talked to some of the other guys. I've learned a huge amount over the last couple of weeks. Great. Um, so regardless of the outcome, it's, it's okay. been a really positive experience. Well, the outcome isn't great. Okay. Um, you're not going through to the final. However, we're very impressed with you. And my one concern was I really want someone who, who, who can look at lots of different deals. And I mm. just feel that probably you are 
sort of specialist in your field yeah. rather than a general practitioner, if you like. Sure. Uh, and that was the really the only reason. And, um, you know, going forward, you know, please keep in touch and see what we can do together. Absolutely. Great. We love what you're doing and we want to come and see your site. Absolutely. Signs. We're going to come and see your site. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you're welcome anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm Great. buying lunch, apparently. Sounds good. All right. Find, thank you, James. Uh, thank and thank you for your efforts today. Michelin star restaurant down the white road. Yeah, I'm not sure Lovely. we're going there. I'm not sure we're going I'm definitely there. paying. I'm not sure we're going there. <laughs> Great. Thanks very Thanks, much. James. Thanks. You've got some fans in the on the table here, on, on, the, on the, uh, the top table, as it were. And I can tell you that you're through to the final. Oh, so please um, bring your A game. You can do as much presentation as you want this time, uh, or next time round, I should say. Um, and obviously, you've got to bring yourself a bring a deal that I may not be the deal we do if you win, but it will be it will give us an example of what you can do. Um, so good luck, and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Brilliant, thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure. Well done, Alan. Well done. Thank you. So I think we've picked three very talented people. Mm -hmm. um, I think one or two of the others let themselves down today, and I think by the sound of things, when you talk to them, they would agree. I don't think I there's don't anyone think who's who, who's gone home today and thought, well. I should be through. I think they all realise that actually one way or the other, they've probably let themselves down a bit. One way, perhaps Luigi was the only one I was going to say, say there was and a, James maybe. There was a couple that um, came close, but... But the others, I think they all know that they could have done better on another day yeah. and they will do better on another yeah. day. Yeah. Um, but, but, but there's not one here that I wouldn't be happy to join venture with in some way, probably in the future. No, it was a, um, it was a great... With, you know, it was a great... Great um, 10 that we started with and... It's an even better three that we've got in the next round. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll be bringing their deals to us to, to look yeah. at. That's going to so be. That's going to be the difference yeah. now in the yeah. final. Um, we're both. <laughs> thank you so much, and, and let's see. Let's see who happens in the final. Yeah. Super. Next time we'll see Kimberly, Alfred, and Eleanor all present their own property deals, one in which they have fully researched and costed to John. He'll then pick his winner. But will they impress him? Will he find a potential lifelong business partner? Find out who he'll choose to be his property graduate 2021 in our next episode. There's all to play for.